Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to start writing equations for our exponential functions, starting with tables and graphs. Before we get to the examples, I want to take a look at the equation again. Our equation should always be in the form f of x equals a times b to the x power. Remember that f of x can also be written as y. So let's talk about the letters really quick. The letter a represents the initial value, which on a table or graph will be your y-intercept. The letter B is our common ratio. So the letter B helps us to determine whether it's going to be growth or decay. If the number inside the parentheses is greater than 1, that would be exponential growth. If the number inside the parentheses is less than 1, then that is exponential decay. So now let's look at our first example. So I have a table here. So if I'm going to write the equation, I need an A value and a B value. Once I have those two numbers, it's easy to write the equation. So since we already talked about how the A is the y-intercept, how do you find the y-intercept of a table? Well, it's pretty easy. What you're looking for is when x equals 0. So on our table, x equals 0 right there. So that is our y-intercept slash A value. So 3. Now to find our B value. So remember, B represents whether it's going to be a growth or decay. So let's take a look at our Y values only. 3, 12, 48, 192. Notice how they're getting bigger. So I know for sure that this table represents exponential growth because it's getting bigger. So at least my hint is that B has to be bigger than 1. So how do I find exactly what B should be? So from 3 to 12, how much would you have to multiply by? Okay, so if you can't see that very easily, what you can do is get the second number 12 and divide it by the first number. And that gives us 4. It's called a common ratio because it should be the same every single time. So let's check it out. From 12 to 48, so let me do 48 divided by 12. Again, that's 4. And the last two, 192 divided by 48. And again, that's 4. So see how it's the same every single time? So that number is our B value. So now that I have both A and B, I'm just going to write my equation to where it looks like this, but I'm going to use y. So let's say y equals 3 parentheses 4 to the x power. That is the equation for that table. Okay, example 2. So still a table. This time it's just sideways, but either way it's going to be the same thing. First thing I want to look for is the y-intercept. So I'm going to look for where it is x equal to 0, and that is right here. So that means that my a value is going to be 12. And now for my b value. So when I look at the y's, 72, 12, 2, 1 third, notice how it's getting smaller. So this one for sure is going to be exponential decay. And from our notes above, that tells me that since we know it's decay, B is going to have to be less than 1. The kind of numbers that are less than 1 are either fractions or decimals. So let's take a look. From 72 to 12, what would you have to multiply it by? So the trick that we did for the first table is you get the second number 12, and you divide it by the first number, 72. 
So I believe it's still going to be a fraction because it's decay, but we want to simplify this fraction as much as we can, and it gives us 1 over 6. Okay, same thing here from 12 to 2. So 2 on top, 12 on the bottom. Again, it simplifies to 1 6. Then here, it's going to be fraction within a fraction. But if you have a calculator, you will still get 1 6. So that fraction that was the same every single time, that is our B value. So our equation for this table is going to be y equals 12 parentheses 1 over 6 to the x power. So that's how you find the equation of tables. So now how do you find the equation when given a graph? So same thing, my a value is always going to be my y-intercept. So when you look at the graph, y-intercept is right here. And if I count these squares, it's 1, 2, 3. So our a value is 3. Okay, but now I need to find my b value. Looking at this graph, it is going down, so I know it's going to be exponential decay, which means that my b value is going to be a fraction or a decimal. So I need at least three points to be able to figure out what b is going to be. So if you look at the graph, I'm going to go left to right, and I'm going to make myself my own table. So that point right here, that's at negative 1, 9. So let's write that on our table, negative 1, 9. Our y-intercept was right here. So it's at 0, 3. And then another point that I see is right here. And that's at 1, 1. So now that I have a table, I can do the exact same thing that I did above. So from 9 to 3, how much did it change? So 3 over 9 simplifies to 1 third. And then down here, 1 divided by 3, no simplifying needed. It's already as simple as it can get. So our B value is 1 third. So when I write this into my equation, it'll be y equals 3 parentheses 1 third to the x power. Okay, now let's do that last graph. So looking at the line, it is going up. So this would be an exponential growth. So at least that tells us that our B value has to be bigger than 1. Let's start with our A. A is our y-intercept. So when we look at the graph, it's right here at the number 2. Then to find our B value, we need to make ourselves a table. So I'm going to draw it here on the side. And we need at least three points always go left to right. So on here, I do see some points, but you can't really tell where they are because they don't line up with one of the grid lines. I want points that I know exactly where they're at. So I'm gonna use these three points here. So I'm gonna start with my y-intercept, which is at zero, two. Then the next point is at one, six, and the third point that I'm going to use up here is at 2, 18. Okay, now we need to figure out what our B value is. So from 2 to 6, what would they have to multiply by? Or you could do your dividing. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then from 6 to 18, 18 divided by 6, also 3. So 3 is our b value. Then for our equation, it will give us y equals 
2 times 3 to the x power. And that's how you find the exponential equations for graphs. Hey, if you have any questions over this, please send me an email or send me a message through Google Classroom.